What's up, everybody? Sadiq Tuma back here with another NBA draft player breakdown. This time we'll be looking at Jeremy Sohan, the Baylor forward. The guy who was really referred to as the other freshman behind Kendall Brown, the uber athletic, the five star Kendall Brown, who really came with a lot of hype. And he, he has a good chance to be a lottery pick, definitely a first round pick at worst. But Sohan's really emerged, especially the past you know month or two. But like throughout the season, he's really been impressive. Uh, Baylor's been much better when he's on the court. He missed four games. They went two and two when they were the number one team in the country. And obviously, they had some other issues, but Sohan was a big, big part of that. And he's a big part of their game. He's a very versatile player on both ends of the ball. Uh, excuse me, both ends of the court. A do-it-all type of player who's going to fit into the NBA perfectly. You look at his game. He's averaging just under 10 points a game, 6.4 rebounds, under two assists, 1.3 steals. He really he fills it up all over the stat sheet. And he's a guy who's going to help a team in a in multitude of ways. And we'll start out with his you know his dribble drive game. Because his, his ability, when he gets downhill attacking closeouts as a secondary ball handler, that's really where he excels. He's not, you know, advanced ball handler yet, but he's super versatile, like I said. He can slide down, play the five, and cover big men. As you're going to see a lot in this, he's covering David McCormick, who's, you know, one of the bigger guys in college basketball, one of the better low post threats. And then he'll also play point guard, where he's going to dribble the ball, he's going to bring it down uh, to start out plays, he's going to dribble in those half-court sets, he's going to do a lot of things, but... Over here, we'll start out with Sohan. Down here, he's coming off and going to set a pick for Flagler. Comes down and immediately pops. And this is the key, right? Kansas is going to double Flagler as that play goes on. Um, so you get you get Sohan up at the three-point arc, wide open. Right? Ball goes over here. And remember, it's these two guys we're doubling, right? Especially McCormick, who is going to be who is going to have to recover back onto Sohan. So the theory here is they're not too concerned about Sohan's shot, right? So let him shoot. So say so because they double Flagler, who's the bigger threat, right? So when they do that, and mark this play down, 16-30, second half. This is going to be important because we're going to see something similar later in this video. But Gab McCormick here, and watch him. As soon as that ball goes to Sohan, watch him recover. He stops, right? He, he excuse me, he contests. <laughs> um, and he steps way too far. And you get your eyes back to Sohan, the little pump fake, and then he's able to just drive straight, right? That's that's part of just the understanding, the ability to use pump fakes and drive. This is where he really excels, right? Attacking closeouts. Uh, gets a ball and then straight line. He's very hard to uh, stop because he's got good balance as a driver. He changes speeds pretty well uh, in general, but he's also got the strength and the power to finish through contact. Stands at about 6'9", 230 pounds, 7 foot wingspan. He uses length really well as a finisher as well. He can finish with either hand. So he gives you a lot of different things. Then we're going to see here one more time. You got Sohan. This time it's not alpha pick look, but you got Sohan over here in the corner. And as he gets that ball, off the handoff kind of watch him spin right you like this a lot because this is just the feel and the iq um because this alabama defender i believe it's Juwan gary is basically seeing the pick that's coming later on and getting closer to sohan and trying to jump that right so the pick here from float Thamba up here so gary the defender is going to step forward and going to try to get closer to sohan and pressure him and also get higher up so he doesn't get stopped by the pick, so he can get over top of it and keep his body on Sohan. And because of that, Sohan merely feels and just stops, spins, and gets a clean look toward the basket, right? Watch it one more time. Here. And then gets right to the basket. Easy. Falls down again. And then we see this here. Uh, transition look. You got Sohan here. Um, he's going to set a pick. Well, really, it's more of a ghost screen, kind of. Um, slips it. And again, well, what do we see again? Double team from these two guys, right? Onto Flagler. This time it's not as hard to double team, but um, because the man gets back onto Flagler. But so because of that, you've now created this space between these two guys. So what happens again? Sohan becomes that secondary ball handler. And you watch again, right? The big man right here. Watch him. As soon as Sohan gets with that pump fake, he steps and contests. So what do you do? You open that angle and you open up that driving lane off those dribble drives. And as he go, watch a spin move, right? I mean, that's that's one of his better things as well. His footwork is tremendous, and you'll see it later on as well. But you watch him with that spin, because then the mid-air adjustment, the body control, it's excellent, and finishes with ease. And it's it's such a good feel for body leverage and all those things that Zohan does really, really well. And we saw him in some of those pick-and-pop looks. Um, 
go off and be that secondary ball handler. And we talk about secondary ball handlers. Think of the Draymond Green role, right? I mean, whatever you think of him, the number one thing that will always come to mind is Steph Curry being doubled, trapped at the top of the screen, and they get the ball to Draymond Green, who's attacking a four-on-three. Now, obviously, this is not exactly the same look because, you know, Draymond's usually um, driving straight into the rim, uh, not working off and reading defenses as much. But still, it's that sort of concept. And you see a lot of guards be doubled and hedged or trapped and blitzed. And what does that leave? A big man on an island on those short rolls a lot of times or plays like this where they become a secondary guy. Now, the issue is you've got a lot of big men who are not able to control it. Now, as the as years have gone on, we've seen less or fewer and fewer of those big men, right? Like the Rudy Gobert or whoever else that can dribble toward the basket off of um, – that catch but when you have the advantage of someone like Sohan who can get that ball when you double him and with an advantage he's he's attacking either four and three or he's attacking attacking closeout where he can find um a passer or excuse me a passing lane or he can score for you and over here talk about this in the pick and roll so over here Baylor's going to bring double screen you got Sohan over here um as they come set that screen and then Sohan just darts toward the basket now this is really really good job by James Akinjo over here also, with his eyes and his, his job fooling this help defender over here, because as Sohan rolls, the defender, the help defender, does a good job skirting toward the paint. Um, but what, what Sohan does really well is stay his place. And that sounds very simple and very easy, but it's very easy when you get down here, ball doesn't come to you, the defender has picked you up to just dart back to the three-point line and forget about it. But he understands there's there's patience here, right? And Akindra over here, who's dealing with a double team, two guys right in front of him, um, he does a good job using his eyes to, to make this help defender, right, behind Sohan, get back to Flagler over here to avoid that skip pass. Um, so Akindra holds his eyes onto Adam Flagler right here. So what does that do? It forces that help defender back to Akindra. And because of that, you open up that passing lane. Because right here, this dude cannot get back to Sohan in time because they've attacked, the, uh, they've blitzed the pick and roll and doubled the Kinjo. And obviously, like I said, it's a good job by Kinjo. Great job by Kinjo. But good job by Sohan just understanding that he's going to hold his ground because what you don't see when you talk about two-on-ones, two-on-ones, three-on-ones, four-on-threes, whatever, you usually talk about one of those guys being the ball handler. What you he have here is essentially a two on one in a different sense of it and it, it's the understanding the patience to hold yourself in the right position gets the bell uh easy basket and this is you know it, it's hard to call sohan really a three level scorer um there's definitely some improvement to be had from that three point range but he gives you enough as a floor spacer right now shooting under 30 percent 29.6 i believe uh, about 25% in conference play, so it's not great. And, but he does show a little bit of range. Um, it's a you know, good shooting stroke. Hits a, or rather takes three, four attempts a game in, in just 25 minutes a game with all the stats. But you you like um, the confidence a lot of times and the stroke, and it's going to get better with you know touches and reps and everything. So watch as that play starts. You got Sohan here. Once again... Um, setting a pick, well, kind of slipping it a little bit, and again, you got that double right. What this was exactly like I talked about in the first play, right? You got that double right here. So again, you isolate McCormick, and what does he do this time? Ball gets back, holds himself right, doesn't bite, holds himself right here because Sohan with the pump thick is looking for that driving lane, just like he did one minute ago. Remember, sixteen thirty. Now we're about fifteen twenty-five. Instead, McCormick holds himself and holds himself right there. And now you've got that space, right? Now Sohan's got to make a decision. Last time he drove it, but if McCormick's going to give him all this space here, he's going to shoot it. Good stroke, right? And a lot of times those strokes look good, but th this is kind of the battle. When they give you space, when they play off of you, you need to be able to hit those looks, right? The per percentage isn't great, but it's going to get better as time goes on. Like I saw, talked about, good stroke, very good high release point on that shot. Um, there, there, It can be sped up for sure. It's not a very fast release, as you can see. But that's going to be one of those things that's going to be really key in his overall development. Because when you talk about the way he is, when you talk about you know guys without a lot of athleticism in general, 
the way to really maximize their football potential is shooting and ball handling, and on offense at least. Um, and you, the two examples you point to, Steph Curry, Luka Doncic. Steph Curry is not an elite athlete. Everyone knows that, right? But a lot of times you forget about that because he drives he drives right past guys. Why? Because of the ball handling, the hesitations, and the insane shooting range, you have to close out on him. So because of that, he he, he manipulates you and drives past you, right, and gets those open lanes. He makes up for, the, for that athleticism. Sohan, it's going to be the same thing. Um, he's not an elite athlete. He's a smooth athlete, as you can see. I think he's got underrated uh, straight line speed, just enough leap, leaping ability. He's not overly quick. He's got enough of a first step. But to really, you know, really, I mean, like I said, the strength, the power, the size really help. The ability to change speeds is, is commendable. But he's going to have to do, like we just talked about, get these guys to close out, improve your shooting and your ball handling. He, he dribbles a little bit high right now. Like I said, he can still operate as your, you know, point forward. He is definitely gives you those ball handling skills, but that's another place where he's going to have to improve a little bit. But as you can get those guys to close out on you and you, you, you get better as a shooter, not only are you helping your team as that versatile piece, you're also improving your overall offensive game. Uh, but one thing that you do like that you hope this kind of translate is his mid-range game, which we'll get to next clip. <laughs> um, we'll see one more as a floor spacer. So hand, handing it off, and one more time with the uh, little pick, and then the fade, slips the pick, and then right now, again, you got the double team, right? And then you get that ball back to Sohan, and shoots it, makes it. And the reason I like this one a lot is it shows, this is something that never really gets talked about, shooting, or excuse me, catching the ball for a shooter in their shooting pocket is important. If you catch it in stride as you know, shooting a layup, it's good. If you catch it in your shooting pocket and then put it up in, in rhythm, it's good. When the ball drops like here, like as you're gonna see right here, ball drops and then you gotta pick it up. That kinda takes you out of rhythm as a shooter just a little bit. But catches it and still makes it. So like I said, he's not an elite shooter, he's not even, I don't even know if you wanna class him as a good, I guess good shooter is fine. Not a great shooter, obviously, but these are some of the things you look for, um, and that's that's a place where you're gonna need to see him improve to really maximize once again, because irrespective of everything else, it's really becoming more and more of a shooting league. It's a prerequisite, no matter what position you play, almost a prerequisite that you need to be able to shoot. Um, if you're really good at something else, you can make make up for it a little bit here and there, like a Stephen Adams, but you really have to be good at that. But like I said, with the mid-range, you like that a lot. Um, and we, we saw with that spin move before with the footwork, he displays it tremendously. He can pull up off, you know, pick and rolls. Like like I said, when, when I talked about offensive versatility and him as a secondary ball handler, he's also, like I said, your point forward who's bringing the ball up. He operates, we saw him as a screener. He's also very good as a pick and roll ball handler where he's the one, he navigates very well. He's very patient. He makes good decisions, very wise decisions. And he, like I said, changes speeds well. And over here, um, you see him and his ability to pull up in the mid-range off the dribble. And this is, like I said, this is something that's somewhat promising as you look toward his arc as a three-point shooter. You see him, dribbles left, spin, and go. And, and watch as he spins. Like I said, tremendous footwork. Uh, but overall, watch... The understanding right he hasn't fully beaten this man he knows there's a help defender down here i guess two guys down here so um he doesn't drive that in because he knows it'll be a bad shot he has a very high iq you see that in all aspects of his game so you watch a spin and he's created just a little bit of space but the elevation when he gets up here there's there's no way you're contesting that you you feel that as a shooter when you get into that area i mean look how much there is right it's perfect and because of that knocks it down you see here one more time. As that ball comes, skip pass all the way to the corner. You got Sohan over here. Ball gets to him, drives down. Again, doesn't beat him, but use his strength get to just get enough space. And again, using his elevation more than anything, right? Spin, get up there, right? And this is a little bit better contested, but you feel that when you know you have just enough space at this point. You know you have that space. You know you're not getting blocked because you have confidence in that shot. And he hits it. And that's, that's a very good tool for him. And it's something that makes him more than just, you know, a 3 and D guy. More than just a dribble drive guy. He, he gives you more. 
and he will continue to improve on that. Um, like I said, works off those pick and rolls pretty well because he's gotten better and better as a playmaker, averaging just under two assists a game. He's not, you know, the greatest passer. I won't say he's, you know, an ultra advanced passer or anything, but he does make good decisions, makes good, good reads, um, and finds teammates. He does a very good job of collapsing defenses and understanding when he has to make those sort of reads. So you got some hand over here, kind of a role, role replace look a little bit, and he gets the ball to the top and watch his defender, right? This West Virginia dude, he is overcommitted. And again, it's almost like the equivalent of a pump fake, but even better than when we saw McCormick jump a little bit. You've got a perfect driving lane now. And so because of that, this dude over here for West Virginia is going to have to help once Sohan gets there. And a perfect little drop off. The understanding, it's excellent. Here, one more time. Got Sohan up near the wing corner-ish. Um, and as this play initiates, you're going to see Sohan kind of drift a little bit to that baseline and get that ball and just attack. And at this point, he's got now one, two, three bodies essentially around him. And he just finds an open shooter, right? Like, half the battle when you're a really good passer is getting defenses to collapse and opening up passing lanes. Sometimes simple. And now, because of that, you got a wide open float Damba. Good. Easy shot. And we saw some of this, right, the off-ball movement with his, or rather, you know, just the off-ball understanding with his pick-and-roll clip as a screener. But he overall just does an excellent job as a cutter, um, but more just feeling it out and understanding where to go in, right? Over here, you got Sohan over here, and he's going to get behind the defense. So as Flagler starts dribbling, keep your eyes on Sohan, just finds that soft spot, gets the easy basket. And this one I love a lot because it's a lot of subtleties that just show you his IQ and his understanding. See, so it's kind of semi-transition, transition something. You got Sohan up here near that free throw line. Um, and Meyer's going to drive in and find three bodies around him. So Meyer's going to drive in, get over here, and Sohan drifts. And we'll watch Sohan real quick. As, as Meyer gets down, Sohan makes a great decision to go to the baseline. Again, seems simple, seems easy. You watch Sohan, right? Starts going down there and gets that pass right there and gets an easier much easier look now the reason this is so important now let's let's pretend in some alternate universe Sohan doesn't get down here right so that means Meyer gets here Sohan stays right here right then what happens three things are at play one you're making Meyer make a very difficult pass a rather a much more difficult pass because um, this help defender right here is, is ready for that pass, and the passing hole is even harder. He's got to throw it around two bodies, essentially. Number two, Isaiah Brockington is coming down to that exact spot. Now, let's pretend both those things happen. Meyer makes that pass. Brockington doesn't get on Sohan. Then, once Sohan catches it up here, he's got to, he's got to dribble two through two, three dribbles, he's got to shoot through a contested layup, a much more difficult shot than it would need to be. And in likelihood, he would have missed. So because of, but because he doesn't do that, because he slides down, you see what happens. All right from here, he slides down, gets the ball here. Great, great basket, right? A little bit of contest, but he still has the skill to shoot around that and make layups. And here, one more time. You got Meyer bringing the ball up like I was talking about. Um, and as he drives in, again, wise decision. Doesn't force it because he realizes there's nothing there. McCormick's playing the drive. So what does he do? Gets the ball up back to Bonner over here. Now Bonner does a good job of immediately realizing that Christian Brown over here overplays it, takes a bad angle, bites on that, gambles on that steal. And now Bonner has that driving lane. Right? Right here. Because Brown, Brown has now overcommitted. Now what Alex Ohan does a lot, after he gets rid of the ball, like we talked about in one of those other clips, I think it was the Alabama one as he was the pick and roll screener. It's easy to just float out, to forget about it, you know, say, okay, I'm defended. But what he does well is understands as soon as Bonner starts driving down, Sohan holds his ground, right, around here, doesn't float all the way back, and understands that Brown is overcommitted. So what does that mean? That means McCormick is going to be forced to drive down and help, right? And what happens? McCormick comes down. So what, is, what does Sohan do? He follows it up. As soon as that drive happens, open up a little passing lane right there. So hands wide open, easy basket, right? 
Watch that in full speed. As that ball comes back from Sohan, first the pass, right? And because of that, easy basket. So, like I said, overall, his offensive package gives you so many different things. And I love him as a rebounder. 6.4 rebounds a game in uh, 25 minutes. So that 40 per 40 minutes, excuse me, per 40 minutes, probably around 10 point something. But he's an excellent rebounder with his strength, but also his technique, anticipation, and more than anything, his effort. Half of rebounding is effort most of the time. That's why smaller guys um, go in and get it. Technique, effort, everything. So you got Sohan down here battling with Mitch Lightfoot. And you love here watching battling, right? I mean, you already see his arms over there. He's not just giving up position or anything. But as as Lightfoot's, you know, keeping him out, Sohan's over here. Still keep your eyes on Sohan. As that ball goes up, watch Sohan immediately because he doesn't have the greatest position. He knows even if he boxes, he doesn't have much of a angle for where that ball's likely to bounce. Why? Because that ball is being shot from ten, five, six, seven, eight feet behind the three-point line. So Sohan once again eyes on him. He's trying. He immediately pushes out Lightfoot, right, and does it subtly enough where it's not a foul. And more than anything, he really pushes him out with his body and side of his body, which is more legal than just pushing with his arms. But you watch Sohan right creates that space, and now he's gotten he's gotten the ability to push Lightfoot out. And what happens to that ball? The longer rebound. But Sohan is able to corral it because of that. Right here, one more time. This one you love as well. So hands over here. He's fronting the post because they're playing. They don't want McCormick to get the ball. One on one. So Han probably doesn't have the strength to stick. Most most guys don't. Um, but over here, they're still fronting it. And when that ball goes up, because So Han's still fronting that post, McCormick has easy position, right? And let's watch. Where is McCormick when that ball goes up? He's over here, right? like about a few feet behind in front of this little arc around the rim right now let's see when that ball goes up let's see what Sohan does he starts pushing in and now where's now where's McCormick he's all the way in under the basket where does that ball end up right above that arc and you watch it this is just effort strength and tenacity to push out a guy who is much much bigger than you and much stronger but again, legal. He doesn't use his arms to push out. He keeps his arms on it, which is fine. He uses his legs to really, his lower body strength, to push McCormick out of the way. And because of that, when that rebound comes up, McCormick's way too deep to catch that ball. So what if Sohan just elevates and grabs it easily? That's, you know, that's only going to show up as one rebound in the stat sheet. But that's something where coaches, players, and everyone's going to see it. The effort and why that was another easy putback for Kansas. And also on offense, he crashes on both sides of the glass. He boxes out well on defense, uh, but also he crashes almost every single uh, play. Now, he doesn't give you much in transition. A lot of that is because he's crashing so much, uh, but, you, you see, but you'd rather the rebound a lot of times than the uh, transition opportunity. And, you know, with these athletes on this team, I think <laughs> you're okay with one guy not giving you that. But in general, you watch Sohan up above that, that free throw line and – Watch once that drive starts happening. Watch Sohan just follow it up. Get that little built back. And it's easy because he's following it up. And, you know, that's one where he's just following it up. And, like I said, crashing. But this is one where I love it because, again, tenacity, effort, and strength. You got Sohan on that on that uh, corner. So watch when that ball goes up right here. That's rather here. When Kendall Brown's about to shoot that three, watch Sohan, right? He's up here again. Watch him just battle through because this Emmett Smith, West Virginia defender, has done a terrific job just with this position boxing out. But watch Sohan. He just continues to push because of that, gets a tip back. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. That, you can't really ask for a better box out um, in terms of you know technique. But Sohan just with the strength, the lower body strength to push out and get two points. You love that. And that, that lower body strength is really a lot of what fixes into his um, post defense and versatility. Like I said, he's he, he played a lot of five once uh, Chamoa Chachua, the, you know, I wouldn't say notorious, I mean famous almost, uh, big man, the, the loved, ever loved 
college basketball big man for Baylor went out with injury so Han started playing a lot more five but even before that he was playing it he's, he's he's got the versatility to do that because he's got the strength the skill set and he gives you an advantage whatever he might lack in a little bit he gives you an advantage on the offensive side because it's hard for guys like McCormick to either defend the shot or drive right because if you close out you saw what he does to you if you if you give him space you can shoot a little bit but and in general when a guy can dribble like that it makes it much harder um but like I said, he doesn't have crazy strength where he's going to be able to defend, you know, the Joel Embiid's and the Jokic's of the NBA. But there's a lot of big men which he will be able to line up with well, especially guys who aren't, you know, posting up and doing a lot of that and relying more on you know, athleticism than they are on just raw strength. But over here, what I love, again, he it's the effort and just the fight and the motor because you see that constantly. His motor is fantastic. It's one of his great traits over here. So you got Sohan down here in the post. Like I said, he can he can drop and you know cover those fives, and then he can switch on to forwards and guards, and defend on the perimeter. Got him over here. Watch him. Just poke that ball out. And then after that, watch him run all the way full speed. And Baylor doesn't get the ball here, but just he doesn't give up on the play. This we talk about when we talk about motor, right? After he swats that ball away, chases it down. And that's great. And this one's awesome because this is what you do when you you know you're 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 outmatched because if that ball goes one on one this is the iq right if that ball goes one on one deep post even if you have good position behind him you're going to be eaten you're going he's going to score over you so what you do you make it difficult for him you you you, you use excuse me you use your advantages the um the quickness the relative quickness to a david mccormick or a big man right So you got Sohan over here um, as McCormick gets in the post, right? We'll, we'll step back for a second. So, yeah, Sohan over here and watch him get into position, right? And what does he do immediately, which I love? He knows where that ball is trying to go. If you're Dewan Harris, Dewan Harris up here, you're not passing to, to McCormick's left toward that free throw line. Why? Because you got all these defenders coming right there in the middle. What you're trying to do is make that bounce pass to to McCormick's right. Now, who's on McCormick's right? Sohan, perfectly, right? And because of that, because he's playing that right side, Harris cannot make that pass. So what does Harris do? Resets a little bit, gets to that slot area, and from there, now, now what has Sohan done? Understands that as well, right? On that right side. But because Harris has gone to that slot, Sohan realizes also, okay, now where's Harris going to pass it? Or rather, yeah, where's Harris going to pass it? To that outside, right? Now Sohan's defending the outside. He's making Harris have to lob it over him to get um, McCormick that ball, right? What does it, he do? Lobs it all the way over, right? As Sohan's on that left side now, right? It went from McCormick's right side when Harris is over on that wing, and then it became on to the left side because that's where Harris would try to pass it now because that, right, that other side angle is not there. So he opens up that so Sohan, Sohan defends that one where it makes it easier for McCormick so Harris has to lob it all the way over right like he does over here and now Sohan what has he done he's made it so difficult because he's pushed I mean you know, watch it right where where is McCormick catching this ball where does McCormick want to catch this ball right about here right down near that arc area that low post area that's on that low block that's where McCormick wants to catch right that little block right here that's essentially what you're looking for as your McCormick now where's he end up catching it eight eight feet away from that and that's what what McCormick or excuse me Sohan has done so well he's burned some time off the clock and gotten McCormick the ball farther away from the basket like I said using your advantages and now McCormick tries to go to work takes a couple dribbles and now he's take a shot from where he's not comfortable with and just misses it completely. And again, that's that's what you do, right? You make it difficult for him in those positions. Now, um, let's see it over here now. So hands over here on that block. Uh, makes one switch. Watch him stick with this dude over here. Pulling over there. Ball gets back eventually. So watch him stick, right? Off ball, the intensity, just the, the denial, not, not falling asleep. Sticks with him and watch him stick, right? I mean, this is like on the perimeter with um, all the way, I mean, eight feet away from the basket. Excuse me, 30 feet away from the basket. You watch him just stick, the let out quickness, and then blocks that shot perfectly. I mean, perfect contest. That's what you're looking for, right? A guy who can switch basically, 
not one through five because a lot of those quicker guards are going to get an advantage in the NBA, but in college level, he's doing that. And here you really see him thrive as a help defender, which I love. Um, over here you got Sohan. So you start that play over here in that free throw line. Now watch as this play progresses. He sticks, he sticks. And now as that as that um, driver comes down that baseline and Adam Flagler over here has to come help, Jalen Wilson's going to make a little dive cut into the paint. So Sohan has to come help. What does he do? Slides in, helps him over there, right? Now that ball goes to the corner. Now Baylor's defense is going to reset. It's going to be a little bit of a mess. A controlled chaos, if you will. Um, and now everyone's on to someone, right? And now you got Sohan over here in that corner def defending Harris. So the ball goes over. Keep your eyes on Sohan. He's sticking. He's sticking. Now from here. Remember, no middle defense for Baylor, right? So they're, they're trying to get Harris to that right side. So this dude over here has to come uh, help over there. So what does it open? This skip pass, which is what you know, no middle defense is going to allow those skip passes. Over he and while while their defense recovers over here to Jalen Coleman lands in the corner right and as that ball goes this defender again right here has to come recover what does he do he recovers he has to close out now opens up the dribble drive but what does Sohan do over here who's on the weak side he comes and contests it perfectly all right watch as that drive starts he understands his assignment drive in contest that ball Coleman lands has to pull up and Sohan contests it perfectly. Uh, cuts off that driving lane and contests it. And because of that, missed basket. We love it. And over here, you can see another thing he does very well. It just reads passing lanes and get, grabs, racks up steals. 1.3 steals in 25 minutes a game. Pretty solid production. Uh, obviously nothing you know to write home about, but it, it's good. And he reads lanes well, right? You got Sohan over here. Um, and as that ball comes to that wing... He's this this Iowa State dude is gonna make a skip pass all the way over here, which is just a terrible decision because there's obviously Sohan who's just you know not too far away, and I don't know what he's looking for, but he, he thinks he can make it. But Sohan's reading the eyes very well and just breaks on it, steals the pass. Now this one I love. You got Sohan over here in the corner, and this is good because we talk about as a help defender, right? So as that pick and roll set happens up here. You got Sohan who's going to come down as the weak side help guy, right? So, what you're looking at is this dude who's coming to set the screen, right? Keep your eyes on him. Screen of sorts. Uh, handoff and then dives to the rim. So, again, Sohan comes down and picks that up. Now he's there, right? So, what happens now? Now the ball handler, Jaden Shackelford, is handed off to J.D. Davison, who's got the ball over here. Now he's doubled because they've brought himself into a corner. That was a bad job by Alabama. Baylor's done a good job trapping him, right, and and making him make a d difficult pass. There's not many passes to be had right now. Now who looks open if you're J.D. Davison? Keon Ellis in the corner. Why? Because Jeremy Sohan has come down to the paint as that help defender. But what is Jeremy Sohan doing so well? He's reading with his eyes, right? So... As that skip pass is open, or J.D. Davison thinks it's open because obviously he's a great passer, but the, when you're under pressure, things get very squirmish, and also that's your only pass. Otherwise, you're probably going to step out of bounds or something stupid. So as Sohan reads that, he's ready to pass it, and Sohan just, excuse me, as Davidson reads that, he's ready to pass it, and Sohan's just watching those eyes perfectly, and then he's just going to break on it like a cornerback playing football. Right, pass goes up, so hand reads it, and it's a very easy pass. And I love that for, like we talked about, from everything from the help defense all the way to, I guess that entire thing was help defense, right? Um, but he does a great job, right? And it shows a lot of that versatility on offense to cover multiple positions, to be able to thrive as a help defender, to switch everything as uh, he does so well in that Baylor scheme that relies on that. It relies on a lot of team defense. Like I talked about with those skip passes, that's what you're allowing in that no middle defense, but you're, you need your defense to recover as one unit to communicate, and he, he fits into that perfectly. And that's a lot of what happens in the NBA, right? It's helping, switching. It, it's not just one-on-one -on -one defense anymore. In fact, there's very little of that. It's it's about working as a unit, and he, he fits that, and he fits the NBA mold on offense as well. Like I said, the, sh the shooting definitely needs to improve. 
but you, you like the mid-range, you like the driving ability, a little bit of ball handling. He, he does, you know, a lot in a lot of different areas. So at very worst, he comes in as a role player. Say he never really gets great as a three-point shooter. He comes in and he becomes a good role player who can, or even if he gets, you know, just good as a three-point shooter, he, he's a, he's going to help be a glue guy, right? Affect you in, or help in all sorts of ways, make wise decisions, keep that ball moving. He can even play like a Draymond Green's sort of role in some of those aspects. And his ceiling gets even higher as he develops that shooting touch and he becomes more and more of a lethal guy. Um, he's got a body to, you know, probably bully smaller guards, smaller forwards possibly. The strength, obviously, we see that. The ability to defend fives even potentially is pretty impressive. I don't know how much of that he's going to do in the NBA, but that that's definitely another characteristic you love. And like I said, his overall NBA arc. It's it's really contingent on that shooting, more than anything in ball handling too, but mostly the shooting because of those athleticism woes, right? I mean, we see Westbrook has gotten away with it for a lot of years because of the athleticism. It also works the other way around. Without the athleticism, you need that shooting to really get you somewhere. Like we see Nikola Jokic, the ball handling, the passing, and the shooting makes up for a lot of those athleticism um, woes, and even the size. Maybe the size also hurts him. <laughs> Regardless. Sohan really is is has you know emerged into that lottery top fifteen for sure top ten uh, discussion for good measure and you see a lot of traits you see why he's really you know lauded by NBA scouts and he, he's going to be a good one for sure he's going to be interesting where him and Kendall Brown end up but especially him as he, months have gone on he's really become the coveted guy but that's been the report on Jeremy Sohan hope you guys enjoyed it if you did like subscribe. Um, and be sure to check out the full scouting report on dbl-coverage.com. Uh, I'll be a scouting report on him and a multitude of other, other guys. And I hope you guys have a great day.